It's a year since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, and since last February we've seen a massive influx of Western weapons into Ukraine. We've seen everything from artillery to infantry weapons, and the breadth of small arms has ranged from brand new Polish MSBS Grots and M4A1s to M14s. In recent months, another Cold War icon has begun to appear in imagery from the fighting, the FN FAL, often described as the right arm of the free world. To date, both standard fixed stock and folding stock FALs have been seen in use, though appearances are relatively rare. The first sightings of FALs came in June 2022, when two photos of fixed stock 50.00 metric pattern type 3 FALs were shared. The first in the second week of June, and the second at the end of the month. The second photograph was posted by Ukrainian combatants in the Mykolaiv region. It's possible that both of these rifles may have been civilian owned weapons pressed into service. It's impossible to know for sure. The most common variant in open source imagery is currently the 50.61 or Parafal, with a side folding stock and a full length 53cm or 21 inch barrel. The rifles could also be the visually identical 50.64, which has an alloy receiver, though this variant is less common. All of the rifles seen in the photographs have Type 3 receivers, which date them to post-1973 production. Sadly, photographs of the weapon's serial number ranges aren't available. A photograph of several crates of these, still in their plastic wrapping, was shared in early October. This is potentially the first sighting of the folding stocked rifles in Ukraine. In late November, a photograph of five parafiles in the same sort of crate was shared and said to have been taken near Bakhmut. On the 10th of December, Dmitry Machnik, a commander of a mortar platoon with the Ukrainian Territorial Defense Unit fighting around Bakhmut, shared his first photograph with his parafile. I contacted Dmitry and he was kind enough to share his thoughts on the rifle. He explained that he liked the rifle and has only had one stoppage. He said it jammed a cartridge case once in an intense fight, but the problem was quickly resolved. He also explained that he really likes the 762 by 51 round and on operations he was able to carry up to 9 magazines for the rifle. He confirmed that the rifles are select fire, and when I asked him about ammunition availability, Dimitro said there's some available but it can't be found everywhere. He said that so far he's only seen the files in use with elements of his own unit, and he opted for the file to replace his AK-74 when he joined the unit. On the 22nd of December, Dimitro shared a photograph of a parafile, which had its forend and stock covered in fur. I asked him about this and he explained that my sergeant decided to disguise the rifle for winter. He partially painted it white and glued on a light fur found among the garbage in Bakhmut. On the 30th of December, several Ukrainian personnel shared an update video from Bakhmut, in which one of the soldiers can be seen carrying a parafile. Several days later, in early January 2023, the same soldier shared another short video filmed in the town square of Bakhmut. Again, the file can be seen. Our most recent sighting of a fixed stock file came on the 31st of December when another Ukrainian combatant shared a photograph holding a 50.00 file, with some scrim wrapped around the butt and carrying handle, and a bipod attached. He wished to remain anonymous when I contacted him, but he was kind enough to share his thoughts on the file as well. He explained that he was issued the file instead of a 762 by 51 UAR-10 rifle, and that he was the only member of his company to be issued one. He was also issued a thermal Thor 4 optic with the rifle, but no means of mounting it. He was also only provided with two 10 round magazines. But even without the optic, he said that as a marksman, you can work a maximum of 500 meters and it hits quite accurately with single shots. Automatic fire gives a very large spread, very loud. Commenting on the rifle itself, he noted that he believes the rifle dated to 1976 and that while cool and a little unusual, it was picky, afraid of dirt. And he noted that once dropped in a swamp, the action almost did not work. He also felt that it was a little too heavy compared to the AK, and he also pointed out that it's very long and not convenient when storming buildings. 
He concluded, in my opinion, it's already outdated and not practical and often very inconvenient. I can certainly see why he'd think that, having been issued only two 10 round magazines. The most recent photograph of a file dates from the 15th of January when Dimitro posted a photo holding his file aloft with the caption, The Unconquered Bakhmut Stands. It's unclear who provided the rifles to Ukraine as numerous nations around the world have fielded similar variants. In Europe, these include Belgium, Greece, Luxembourg, Portugal and the Netherlands. Most of these, however, have long since replaced them in service. If Belgium, one of the most likely candidates, provided the rifles, then they've been in store since the late 1990s. Special thanks to Dimitro and the other anonymous Ukrainian combatant for answering my questions about their files. Dimitro's details can be found in the description box below. Thanks also to the guys at Shrieking Delilah on Instagram, who've been doing great work on documenting some of the plethora of weapons turning up in Ukraine. So far of the three major Cold War battle rifles, we've only seen the M14, check out my video on that if you haven't already, and the FN file. But I'm yet to see any sign of HKG3s. If you spot any, or anything else I should be covering in videos, drop me a comment below or an email. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. If you found this video interesting, please consider supporting us via Patreon or YouTube memberships. We have a number of different perks and you'll get access to all of our videos early. And please do share the videos with friends, it really helps the channel to grow. Thanks again for watching, catch you next time.